Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and in this lesson we will be locating rational and irrational numbers on a number line. So we've seen some of this before, but this will be a good review. A couple of things we need to know before we do get started. Number one. You'll need to know perfect squares. These are perfect squares. We will use them to locate irrational numbers on a number line. We'll be using them to estimate irrational numbers. So you need to know the list of general perfect square numbers and how we find the square root of them to get um, nice numbers. Something else that you'll need to know is how to convert a fraction into a decimal. That's a pretty straightforward procedure. If you're familiar with it, I apologize for this quick review, but here it is. 12 over 5 is the same thing as saying 12 divided by 5, and that would give you 2.4. So that's the basics of converting a fraction into a decimal in about 10 seconds. So you'll need to know that skill, just that fractions mean division. The last thing that you're, you'll need to know is that we will be working with irrational square roots. So these are square roots of non-perfect squares. You've seen several examples of them before. Here are a couple more so that you can take a look at them. Basically, the square root of anything that is not a perfect square is an irrational square root. So we'll be working with all three of those things that we just talked about. Let's get started with our lesson on locating rational and irrational numbers on a number line. First off, we have to estimate some irrational square roots. This is going to be the bulk of um, what we focus on today, um, where to put irrational square roots in, on a number line. And I know I've covered this in another lesson, but I'd like to reiterate these three steps. First of all, you have to think of a number line. Then you have to say, what number does the irrational square root go between? and then find where it fits. Let me show you an example of following these steps. Here we go. For estimating the value of the square root of 5, we ask ourselves where does it fit? So you look over here on the on the right and you'll see a list of perfect squares. Where does the square root of 5 fit? It fits right there. It fits between the square root of 4 and the square root of 9. That means it fits between the numbers 2 and 3. That's important because number lines are not written like this. Square root of 4, square root of 5. Hey, there it is. <laughs> right? It's Instead, it's written as 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, that's how uh, number lines are actually written. So because number lines are not written this way, we wouldn't say it fits between the square root of 4 and the square root of 9. We would say it fits between 2 and 3, but it's closer to 2. That's how we estimate the value of irrational square roots. Let's show another example without our kind of fictional number line. The absolute or the um, square root of 32, where does it fit? It fits between the square root of 25 and the square root of 36. In other words, it fits between 5 and 6. And you can see right here that it's right between 5 and 6. And again, I've kind of made a silly number line here the square root of 25, square root of 36. But the way a real number line will work is that you'll have the numbers there, 5 and 6, because the square root of 25 is 5 and the square root of 36 is 6. So we would say, where does that fit? It fits right about here. It's between 5 and 6, kind of close to the middle, but a little closer to 6, probably around 5.6, 5.7 maybe, right around there. All right? So a little closer to 6, but kind of in the middle. That's how we would locate this on a number line between 5 and 6. Our example in the larger numbers, estimate the value of the square root of 125. We follow those same steps. Where does it fit? It fits between the square root of 121 and the square root of 144. In other words, it fits between 11 and 12. On our number line, where we have 11 and 12 located, it would fit right about there. 125 is much closer to 121 than it is to 144. So we would say it's really close to 11. It's probably like 11.1 if we were talking about it in terms of decimals. So that's a quick kind of recap on this topic. If you want the full lesson on estimating square roots, there is a full lesson available. Um, but this is just part of what we're doing in today's lesson on locating both rational and irrational numbers on a number line.
So let's go ahead and, and talk about this. We're going to estimate the value of the square root of 100. Where does it fit? Well, it's right there. That's right. It is a perfect square. So we have an actual number line here. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, look, 11. Look at that. Um, so with an actual number line, we can show exactly where it fits. It's 10, right? So estimating the values of perfect squares is actually a nice thing to do because it fits perfectly into our, our list. All right, now let's look at the points on the number line. In this list here, we have an irrational number, the square root of 90, we have a decimal, we have a fraction, and we have the square root of a perfect square. So we're going to plot all of these points on a number line because they represent to us rational, irrational, decimals, and fractions. So this is where we're going to bring everything together for our lesson today. First off, the square root of 90. Remember how we estimate those points. I have this list over here to help be our guide. The square root of 90 fits between the square root of 81 and the square root of 100. So it's somewhere between 9 and 10. So on a number line, we'd set it right there. It's right around the middle. Now let's look at our next point, 6.4. 6, .4. six is, means it's going to be between 6 and 7. And the fact that we have that decimal, 0.4, means that we have to look at our number line. 6.5 is directly in the middle, so 6.4 is going to be a little bit off of the middle. All right, That might be a little exaggerated there, but I'm trying to show that it's, it's off the middle towards the left, definitely. That might even be closer to 6.3 right there. Might be up a little bit, but it's right around that area. Our next point is 19 over 2. 19 over 2 at the beginning of this lesson, I told you you're going to need to know how to convert a fraction into a decimal. 19.2 is the same thing as 9.5. 19 divided by 2 gives you 9.5. So it's actually going to sit right there. 19 over 2 is almost the same value as the square root of 90. Just about the same value, not exactly, but they're pretty close. And then the square root of 25 I don't have that this square root listed over here on the right. Square root of 25 is equal to 5. That is a rational number. It's a rational square root because it's the square root of a perfect square. So there's an example of how to locate rational and irrational n numbers on a number line when you're dealing with decimals, fractions, square roots, and irrational square roots. Quick recall on the estimating squ irrational square roots. That's kind of the toughest thing that we did. Um, you think of a number line, ask yourself where the value fits in between it and where exactly it fits. Is it closer to one number, closer to the other? And of course, the other topics we've talked about, simplifying a fraction into a decimal, locating a decimal on a number line, and locating a perfect square on a number line. Hope that lesson's been helpful for you. Here is our Common Core reference. Have a wonderful day.